Well, I can't believe it. The day has finally come when a former student gets to be my gracious guest. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Hey there, Gracious Gang. It's Mike Creamy, and this is The Gracious Guest Show. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Like this content, share it far and wide. And uh, this is a really fun opportunity here today uh, for me to sit down and chat with a former student of mine who is uh, going on to study theology and various other things. We had a great chat, so let me just share with you here a little bit about Martha. Martha Montgomery is passionate about psychology and theology and is currently working towards degrees in clinical psychology, catechetics, and theology at Franciscan University of Steubenville. Martha is also the founder of the Just a Girl Who Loves Jesus blog, YouTube channel, and podcast where she hopes to share the joy and adventure of following Christ with her peers and inspire them to find deeper meaning in their lives. Make sure you check out those links below, too, uh, to Martha's uh, ministry and just to give her all the support you can. She's just uh, she's just wonderful and a, and a lot of fun to talk to. She was a lot of fun to teach. And without further ado, I want to jump right into my chat with Martha Montgomery, just a girl who loves Jesus, here on The Gracious Guest Show. Check it out. Okay, Martha, you're here. <laughs> Welcome to The Gracious Guest Show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's so surreal, um, as I and I, I mentioned this already to folks in the the introductory part. Um, but it's um, th well, this is a first. This is a first to actually have a, a, a former student on the show. There's there's probably some others out there who might be a little jealous, at least just from a uh, kind of a teasing me sort of standpoint. But I've, I've been asked before, you know, by uh, students, sometimes ones who I love dearly, but I don't think it's really a good idea, maybe to. <laughs> sit them in front of a microphone. Um, but in your case, you know, this, this was a really neat opportunity because we'll get into a few different things here, but of course, like your own, um, you know, podcast ministry and your interest in theology, which is what we're going to focus on today. But maybe just uh, before we dive in here uh, and get right to it, just tell folks a little bit about, you know, kind of yourself and, and sort of where you're at now. Yeah, of course. So I was homeschooled my whole life. I'm cradle Catholic. So my faith has always been a part of my life. And I recently decided that I wanted to major in theology because it was just becoming so important to me because, I don't know, like when you hit high school, you know, a lot of things change in your life about your maturity and just yeah. diving deeper into theology through all my online classes and just my relationship with Christ was growing so much. And so it just... It was a new stage of my faith journey, and I just felt like God was calling me to continue that learning process with him through majoring in theology. So I'm very sure. excited to keep keep learning about it because yeah. I I love learning about theology. It's really cool. So what, like, because right now, you're, so you're about to start at Franciscan, is that correct? Yes. Not well. Actually, at the time this is this is you know people are seeing this. You've already begun, so we'll have to get a, a follow yes. up with you at some point. But what are you at, at least at this point, as sort of at the dawn of of this experience here? What are you uh, maybe most anticipating, most excited for, and what might be, you know, as far as what you'd mind sharing, you know, of stuff that you're, you know, maybe apprehensive about or curious about or just not sure how it's going to go? <laughs> yeah. So I. I'm studying catechetics and theology, and so the catechetics side of it is a lot yeah. of how to share the faith, and so I'm really excited to have so much support for learning how to share my faith, because that's something that can be really awkward to do sometimes and really hard to know how yeah. to approach that. <laughs> so yeah. that's going to be really good, I think, because it just gives you some extra support and like how to do it, because there are ways that work better to share the faith. So I'm really, sure. really looking forward to learning how to do that, like in a deeper way. Um, yeah, I think, well, uh, you, well, you have such a great, I think, opportunity. I was just, I'm, I'm pausing because I was thinking like, do, do we just make this a flat out like free advertisement for Franciscan? <laughs> We could. I mean, it's, I, I'm as you know, I've got no problem with that as as an alum myself. But I know there there really is a wonderful. Uh, I feel like support network there, and the way that the campus integrates um, integrates everybody in terms of of um, you know fellowship and accountability. And um, I, I don't know if they I forget if they call it 
it's not like a house system or is that how they, I forget how they refer to it, the but households. there's the households. That's it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, so I, I feel like, you know, sometimes there's this impression, you know, that everybody who go to France goes to Franciscan university or to Christendom or to, um, you know, Benedictine college, Thomas, uh, Aquinas college, uh, Ave Maria, like some of these, these, uh, schools that are becoming increasingly, um, well known for, you know, and, and having that reputation for having a, a very serious uh, faith and orthodoxy. Sometimes there's this impression, I think that like everybody who goes there is some, you know, perfect little Catholic saint. And <laughs> it's not true. I mean, we're, we're all on the journey. We're all sinners, you know? Um, but so I think I, I guess I'm just saying from my experience there, uh, I, I think you're uh, heading into a, a, a beautiful place to be able to have that balance of that support, you know, but you know, some challenges too. <laughs> no mm -hmm. doubt. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's it's going to be a really big change in my life to be first time mm -hmm. living away from home and everything. But like you yep. said, it's a really, it's a great place. And yeah, there's so much support from like all your teachers and faculty and everything. Like, yeah. it's just so cool that everyone cares so deeply about theology. I think that's part of what I love about it is like the teachers really, really love what they teach. Like, yeah. especially the theology department, because that's kind of what they're known for at Franciscan. So right. it's going to be, it's going to be really cool to have such a community. But like you said, yeah, there will be challenges too. So, Well, and, and let me, let me ask you, me back up a little bit as far as, so looking at your own journey and your own interest. Um, and by the way, just in case anyone's going to accuse me of this, this is not in any way, shape or form, some sort of like backhanded way of like me trying to convince you all you know, that you should study with me, um, you know, and homeschool connections, <laughs> Even you but, should. but you should. Yeah. I mean, I hope you do. Um, but, but I'm genuinely curious about, you know, like, obviously I met you through some, some courses that you took with me, but you know, your experience with homeschool connections and especially your experience, let's say with, you know, theology and this passion, you know, is something that I'm sure had a lot of different, you know, influences, a lot of different, um, uh, grace, you know, or different graces from the Lord, uh, you know, maybe talk a little bit about, when you first maybe started, you know, finding that fire kind of within you, that, that interest, that passion of, of specifically of, 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 of the intellectual, you know, sort of desire to study this more deeply. When did you really start to notice that? Yeah. So I have been taking homeschool connections classes through all of high school. And so I think the first semester, it's a two semester class. So I took the Summa Theologica class and right. That was a lot being thrown at me at once for freshman year of high school, but <laughs> I, it really hit me then. Who, who taught how, that, by the way, Martha? I'm sorry, I forget who. Um, Do you remember that who one that was, was Dave Palmer. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So I. Oh, really how, yeah. Of that. course, that was Dave. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's his. That's his bailiwick. Yeah. 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 That's wonderful class, but that was just. There's so much to be intellectually learned from that. Like you realize the intellectual side of the faith in a new way when you dive into the Summa, because like I said before, I'm cradle Catholic and I've been, I've been catechized like through all my schooling. But when you hit high school, like you have a different capacity to learn those things. And some of the things I learned before high school felt like it was repetition, not in a bad way necessarily, mm -hmm. but just, it's a lot of the same stuff building on it. And then when you dive into the Summa, you realize what a world of like how intellectual theology really is not right. to say that it, there aren't other facets to it of course but like how much is thought out and like it really makes sense and so that definitely sparked some interest in the intellectual side of theology for me but i think it was really a process that happened through all my years of high school as i took classes that dove into different aspects of faith i just found myself wanting to learn more and more like the more I learned, I felt like I knew less. Like I realized how little I knew when I started diving into it. That's funny how that happens. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow. Okay. Yeah. This whole side of things I didn't even know existed or like, I didn't know there was, right. I didn't know there was more to that. And so just going deeper into so many different aspects, I was just really intrigued by the fact that the church really has an answer for everything. And like, there is so much to learn about every aspect of the faith and also the more i learned about it the more i found myself loving it like mm -hmm. i was truly loving the things i was learning even if they 
sounded really dry or boring to learn about. Like I loved it because I knew it was connected to God and I knew in some way it would affect my relationship with him because it was something yeah. related to him. So that was a really big turning point where I just realized that there's so much to learn about theology. And the more I learn about it, the more it kind of, you know, it flowed into my relationship with him. It wasn't just, yeah. I was learning and I was having a relationship with him. They were really truly connected aspects of my faith. That was actually going to be my my next question was, was sort of how, or maybe if there's an example or any particular example that jumps to mind of, of maybe a case where you were, I don't know, struggling with something or wondering about a particular teaching, you know, something that might be part of like a, an assignment, you know, that it's like, it starts off as school, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, and I know this from my own journey too, that there started to be these moments of where it was like, no, this is like way more than just like a homework assignment or just a question this teacher randomly came up with. This is something that like I can see even now, you know, 14, 15, 16 years old, whatever, you know, concretely affects me or, or, or at least, you know, I can understand that it affects people. And I know I'll be at that stage potentially someday myself, you know, um, is, is there anything like that that really jumps to mind where that really you know, came alive for you like that? Um, well, a lot of the time when I had classes that were specifically about evangelization and there would be homework assignments and things, of course, that were about evangelization, like the different terms and stuff connected with it. But as I was learning about evangelization through my classes, I started realizing this was something that is a crucial part of the life of every Catholic. Like, mm -hmm. it's not just something to learn about doing. It's not just something that you take class on. Like, no matter what your stage in life, what your age is, like, that was something that we need to do in some way. And so learning about the different ways to evangelize in classes wasn't just an intellectual exercise and a different way of looking at it. It was really something that had to do with me personally. Hmm. That, and, and I forget, um, now you've, uh, you don't have to you know divulge too much specific info here, but I know you're, um, you got a couple brothers and sisters, correct? <laughs> <laughs> So is this something that, you know, has, has come up in your experience with, you know, just the, the realities, right? The realities of, of home life and having siblings and sibling conflict and opportunities for sibling uplifting, like any of that kind of family interaction. Um, did, have, have you found, you know, that, uh, that family environment as especially sort of uh, helpful or important kind of in your own, um, you know, theological study and kind of that, that you know, reinforcement from, you know, those who are, at least, you know, interested in, in some of the same, you know, sort of uh, realities of faith in your own life? Yeah, definitely. I, yes, I have many siblings. And so my, some of my brothers and I, we love talking about theology together. And I think it's really cool because when we'll bounce off of each other and have those conversations, sometimes we'll dive deeper into things than we would have on our own. And also like, if I get off a of class and go downstairs and I go talk to my mom about it or something and she'll ask mm -hmm. me questions and it just gives me a new way to express it because when you have to say something out loud, you start thinking about it in a different way. So sometimes right. having those conversations with my family really helped me help to solidify what I learned like in classes and things. It helped it helped me learn about it more by talking about it because then I'd start talking about it in some way and be like, wait, I don't really know the rest of that. Like I would start explaining something and realize I didn't really pay attention as much as I thought I did. And then I'd have right. to go in and learn more about it. So yeah, that revisit. was <laughs> yes, <laughs> again and again. So yeah, definitely having the support system of my family and being able to talk about all this with them has been super helpful for me. Yeah. Sure. Well, I know you mentioned too, you know, interest in, in psychology. Um, and, and walk me through that a little bit. I forget, was it clinical psychology? Yeah, that you clinical mentioned? psychology. Yeah. So is, is there, I'm just curious about, you know, the kind of the, as much of the backstory, I guess, as you could give with that. <laughs> Have you found like um, that and your theological interests um, dovetailing, you know, kind of nicely together? Or, you know, is there something um, about the sort of interest in the human person, the human psyche, you know, that... Um, kind of you know, came up through that, that theology study or they have they been kind of parallel? 
Yeah, so um, my interest in psychology also started from homeschool connections class, and that was the one taught by Julian Alquist. It's Mm -hmm. just an intro to psychology, and I just loved the way that it was a Catholic view of psychology because I hadn't really taken psychology classes previous to that because it's so hard Mm -hmm. to find good ones that – it's yeah. it's a very dangerous territory to get into if you don't have the faith. Sure. And I just loved the way that in that class we would look at all the different psychological standpoints, but also mesh them with the Catholic faith and see where it works together and where maybe they went off track because it doesn't mm-hmm. align with the faith. So when I was going when I was applying for college, I was originally going in just as a clinical psychology major. I wasn't actually mm-hmm. planning on majoring in theology or catechetics at that point. Okay. But my interest in psychology was always um, – it was always connected with my interest in theology because, like yeah. like you said, it is the study of the whole person psychology is. It's study of the mind in, in a way, the body, but also the soul. And right. I think a lot of people forget that or the, some of the yes. more secular approach to it forgets that psyche means soul, not brain. Yes. <laughs> There's more more to it than that. Yeah. So that was always my perspective was that you can't separate yeah. the soul from the mind. You can't strictly make it a biological study. There has to be the spiritual and the whole other side of things that we can't see and can't touch, but is very much affecting people in psychologically in one of the many ways and it can affect us in so many more ways but yeah. my interest was specifically the way that theology and the things we can't see affect us psychologically so that was always my standpoint with psychology and yeah i was i was not going to study psychology anywhere but franciscan because i wanted to make sure my psychological studies were definitely yeah integrated with the catholic faith well, I think that's it's such. I I feel just at least at this point of life, you know, for various reasons, you know, from just, you know, like per, things along my personal journey, um, you know, the the reality and the chat, the blessings, but also you know the challenges of uh, married life, the challenges of parenthood, you know, I uh, I am someone who has personally benefited on on multiple occasions from different levels of you know psychological assistance or you know th- therapy occasionally um and i think there's this is, there's still a stigma right about a lot of this i saw it in the army too you know this idea that you just have to tough it out you know and um and i think there's at least in my experience there's been more and more in a lot of areas i think in our society i'd, I'd give them a thumbs up on this um openness to encouraging people to seek, you know, uh, help when needed and then, you know, strategies, you know, for how to cope with, um, certain difficulties or just how to manage your time better, how to manage your anger, like all of these, these psychological things that are so important. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I feel like there has been a lag for those of us, like you said, who are, um, very serious about our faith. It's so easy to then get, (laughs) you know, counsel from maybe well-intentioned people, but well-intentioned people who, have a very flawed, you know, view of uh, the human person, um, yeah. and so I I know firsthand that you know it can be tremendously uh, relieving and helpful and and um, so desired. You know, I know from a lot of people to have access to you know Catholic, you know, good solid Catholic, um, you know, clinical practitioners. You know, um, mm-hmm. and so. So bravo to you. You know, of course, see where the Lord wills you to go with this, but. Uh, um, I don't know if you, I know Dr. Uh, Greg and Lisa Popchak have a lot of work that mm-hmm. they do. I don't know if they're, are they in Steubenville? Do you know that? I'm not sure. I actually do I, not remember. They they were, I don't know if they still are, they're not too far from there, but, but there's, um yeah, I guess I'm just saying I'm rambling, but I guess I'm just saying it. I feel like it's a real good time and there's, there's a growing network. I feel like of, of Catholic, um, very Catholic minded, you know, uh, psychologists and psychiatrists and folks working in those yeah. fields. Um, is that, would you say that's kind of the, well, <laughs> I guess I'll just ask you cause Hey, look, plans change. God changes <laughs> them for us sometimes. So just where you're at right now, do you have kind of, you know, sort of a, um, you know, some idea, at least in mind of, of where you, you know, hopefully see this track kind of lead, you know, what, what you're hoping to kind of, um, you know, where, where you'd hope that this particular educational path would lead you. Yeah. So yeah, like I said before, I'm studying clinical psychology, catechetics, and theology. So my my original plan going in was there's a track at Franciscan where you can take 
um, your Bachelor of Arts in Clinical Psychology and then get an additional year to have your Master's in Counseling. And after that, you can be licensed as a counselor. So that was my original goal. I'm still hoping to reach that point and then I can be licensed as a counselor. I'm not sure yet as far as PhDs go. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. still figuring that out. Um, but yes, I definitely like to get to the level where me, I could. Me, me be too. You've got you've got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't even started freshman year yet, so I think right. I got the time. <laughs> yeah, so I'd like to get to the point where I could be licensed as a counselor. I think that would be a really. I think that would definitely be something that I would enjoy doing. That I would be able to bring Christ to others through, mm-hmm. and it just. It, at this it's, point in time, it feels like God might be calling me to that. So that's definitely. Well, yeah, that's, I was going to yeah. ask if you've seen like in your own kind of discernment, you know, uh, uh, personal sort of um, characteristic, like, I mean, are there personal characteristics or traits or skill sets that, you know, that you kind of notice in yourself that, you know, and, and I think in our best attempts to be humble, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, I, I know I've struggled with this. Sometimes we can you know, almost have like a false sense of humility and and not recognize certain gifts and talents or push it away when it really is something to lean into. Do you find that that kind of maybe that gift of counsel, so to speak, you know, might be something that you, you know, already kind of have in a sense or something that's already sort of, you know, found its way into your life and into your relationships with others? And, you know, yeah, I would definitely say it has because I personally, I really like just sitting and listening to people, like letting them share things that, they want to share, but sometimes it's hard for them to share or they don't know who to share it with. Like, I like just listening to people and being there for them. And I've actually been told by a lot of my friends that I'm really easy to open up to just because I'll just sit there with them. So right. that's, yeah, that's definitely and think something that I've lived out in my own life, something that would carry over to counseling where you sometimes just have to sit and listen, let them unburden their hearts to you. Right. So, yeah, I definitely yeah. feel a wow. lot of fulfillment in that area and like it's definitely something i could i could transfer sure. over to that because i really enjoy doing that and it's really good for other people too so it, sh- it sure is and it's it's something really you know and it's i really believe the lord will help you and, and i'm sure already is you know to find where like basically the the best outlet the most like um According to his will, like the the most sort of, you know, flourishing kind of outlet for any gift he gives us, you know, because I, mm-hmm. I struggled for a while with like in my own priestly discernment phase, um, you know, I had a lot of people like it was weird. It was like a series of, of several months, even a couple of years where it, it was almost like every month or two, like a complete other stranger that I would meet or be working with or something would somehow make a comment that like I would make a great confessor. You know, and I, I really took that seriously because I'm like, okay, this is yeah. weird. And then, you know, when I started to sort of sense that I wasn't really called to the priesthood, I was struggling with that because I was like, well, what about mm-hmm. what all they said? And that that was a follow up to, you know, and a growth point for me where I realized, well, yeah, but like the the, the talent or the skill from God, because it's from Him, mm-hmm. to be good at that, very well may be the same technically, right? The same skill that will hopefully make me a more attentive and forgiving, you know, dad (laughs) or, or, or a more merciful teacher when right now this moment calls a little bit more for mercy than justice. Mm -hmm. And so that's, so that's, uh, you know, uh, he, I guess I'm just saying that one of the beautiful things I've found in studying theology, like academically, intellectually Mm -hmm. is then, you know, like you said earlier with, with taking it into your own prayer life and your own life, um, Mm -hmm. you know, there's those very, I think, you know, helpful realizations just about yourself too, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, which again is part of that psychological, um, you mm-hmm. know, sort of discernment too. So yeah. is there anything with, within theology or psychology, um, since we're, we're overall kind of focusing on th- theology here today, mm-hmm. let's, let, let me go back to theology for a second. Is there any, you know, topically or, or just sort of like, um, uh, particular I hate to say subjects because there's the whole thing with that, but, but really yeah. we break them into subjects a lot of, you have to break them down somehow. Any particular mm-hmm. aspect of the faith that you're really, you know, um, attuned to really interested in hoping to, you know, become more expert in at Franciscan. Yeah. Um, I have a couple that I'm really just study again and again. And every time I'm like, I just love this. And one of those is Bible history. Mm-hmm. I 
really love studying the Bible, which is funny because it's not something I always appreciated fully because I'm sure as a lot of people who grow up Catholic, you hear it at mass, but then it's hard to read it on your own sometimes. And like, sure. because, because <laughs> it's difficult to like know what's really being said there because it's written in such a different style and everything than we're used to in our time. So it's definitely something that's been growing in me over the years. So, and I just, I just love the idea that the Bible is a Catholic book. It's not something we need yeah. to be scared of. It's not something we need to shy away from. And like the more we dive into it and have guidance on learning about it, the more we realize about our own faith and the yeah. more we can learn about where our faith came from. And because there are older brothers and sisters in the faith, the Jews are. So like, mm -hmm. it's just really interesting to follow the thread of God's plan for his church throughout the Bible. That's one of my favorite things to study. So yeah. Yeah, oh, definitely. Kudos. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> kindred spirits there. Um, well, let me ask you then too, with, with, um, you know, cause we, we, um, we're keeping this a little shorter here today and, and concise, you know, just to get people fired up to hopefully go study theology themselves if they're not <laughs> doing already. But, but let me ask you, you know, just a little bit about, uh, just a girl who loves Jesus. Where, how did that develop? <laughs> and what are you hoping to, to, you know, do with that podcast, especially now, you know, being in the, the Mecca of, I mean, you, like you, like you could be walking down this, you know, the, the path and bump into Dr. Han any day or, you know, like, you know, know. Bishop so Barron cool. or Jordan Peterson came through. Like there's all, like, all kinds of people in like the church and in society who come through there. So what, are you hoping to um, you know, sort of expand the podcast to keep that going, you know, while you're uh, a student? Yeah, right now that is definitely the plan because I even if no one else listens to it, I think it's really beneficial for me to learn how to communicate that way and also to learn to reach out to people and ask them if they want to be on the podcast because like all I can say is no. So like right. <laughs> and have the opportunity to talk to those like those teachers I'm going to have and the amazing speakers and things that will be on campus. I think it's going to be really really good to be having those conversations with them. So my hope is yes, I – I'm hoping to continue it through college and yeah, I actually recently changed it. So my first few episodes I made were just myself, which I quickly realized is very difficult to just talk <laughs> to yourself about something. So yep. <laughs> yeah, so I've been working on making it more guest oriented at this point and trying to make it more conversations between me and then whoever the theological guest is because it's just – it's more natural that way. It's just easier to have yeah. a fruitful conversation. Yeah. It'll just be really cool to be able to have those conversations with people that maybe I probably wouldn't have an opportunity to really get to know outside of that and just be able to talk about the faith with them because that's what yeah. they love. That's what I love. So. Amen. <laughs> well, it's, it sounds really exciting for, you know, and I, it's funny cause I was just thinking like I wasn't prepared I really kind of came into my faith um, and, and confidence and studying and everything in my undergrad years. I'm I'm just really happy and excited for you, you know, because like we're always growing. There's always so much more to grow. Mm -hmm. um, but you know that passion and that that sort of lifelong commitment. I think seeing that in you this this early is is just something that, that really. Uh, delights me. And I'm really excited, you know, for you too. And for those who uh, you get to chat with, and I'll tell you, at least based on my experience, m more of them will say yes to your interview request than you might think. <laughs> Cause there've been some yeah. where I was like, Oh, they'll never get back to me. And, and one of my favorites is father Lampert, you know, who's really making this, the rounds on YouTube with all these exorcism videos and stuff. And mm -hmm. he's just so completely like mild mannered. <laughs> and like, I, you know, I, I saw him on all these shows. I'm like, Oh wow, this guy's like this rock star exorcist, you know? And I was looking at some videos and I, one of the video um, descriptions, like literally just had his email in it. And I'm like, well, <laughs> okay. So I like, I emailed him. I'm like, Hey, do you want to come on my show? He emailed me back like that afternoon. And he's like, wow, sure. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Meanwhile, there's people like that. I know personally that I can't get books still. Like, <laughs> I just can't like make it happen. So, so it, it's, that's a lot of fun. It can be frustrating, but I, I really am um, excited for you to have that experience too of, of more and more just just getting the excitement of having those conversations. So, but well, Martha, is there anything else you want to you know share? And well, actually, let me ask you this. Do you know, uh, maybe just to close out what courses, is that all set yet? I mean, do you have your, your, you know, plan for the fall here when people watch this, yes. like, what, what will you be taking? <laughs> yeah. Let me think about that. 
I, I put you so. on the spot. You don't have your, your transcript <laughs> there. <laughs> no, I think I have to memorize at this point. Um, <laughs> I have core class. I have anatomy and physiology, okay. which I kind of need that for psychology. Right, um, right. And then let's see what else. Developmental psychology, which is awesome because mm -hmm. I love that. Um, That's my and wife then I have... moved in the direction. Yeah, develop. Well, yeah, human family uh, for family and what was it human development and family studies. So she always loved mm -hmm. all of the. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. Um, and then I got, I think a Trinity and Christology class. Okay. So that's gonna be fun. Um, that? Do you know who that's with yet, or they have not? Done all the I professor don't assignments remember. Okay. They have told us. I just don't remember that one. Okay. So. <laughs> and then I got principal of biblical studies. Nice. And I got something else. Some other theology class, and I can't remember what it is at the moment. There's just too many to count. Yeah, there's a... <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll you'll have you'll have a wonderful theology. Yeah, absolutely. You'll have a wonderful time there and, and uh well and I I've definitely like encouraged people you know, I know you're releasing this earlier than I'm able to, but the uh, the links below, you know, I've got linked to your um, to your podcast. Well, Franciscan University links, of course, as well, <laughs> just to you know, give them, you know, and uh, hey, maybe it'll make that algorithm go nuts. You know, people looking for Franciscan <laughs> will see this. So, but Martha, yeah. thank you so much for for you know coming on today. It's been a delight and just a wonderful you know opportunity to see you branch out here, and <laughs> I'm so excited to hear what happens next. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for yeah. having me. Yep, yeah, take care. Well, I don't mind telling you, I'm really proud of her. It's so uh, so delightful. She was always very insightful in class. I had her for a couple classes in Homeschool Connections, and uh, I'm just, just deeply thrilled and really, really excited uh, for her and also for us, for the church, you know, and, and getting to uh, meet some of these young men and women who are, uh, you know, kind of taking up the mantle, so to speak, and really stepping out in a, in a really challenging time, right? Increasingly challenging times uh, where the world is is just seemingly losing its mind and its soul more and more and more, and so desperately in need of, of uh, some people with real common sense, some real passion, some real love for our Lord and love for neighbor. So uh, she's definitely one of those. So I want to thank Martha again for coming on. Thank you for joining us here on the Gracious Guest Show. And until next time, don't forget to wonder. Take care.